Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. Okay, here we are. Next step in our journey through ocular anatomy. Uh, we're now going to talk about the lacrimal apparatus. We've talked about the parts of the eye. We've talked about all the internal structures and some of the external structures. Now we're going to start looking at some of the accessory structures that are equally important and that are parts of the eye that we as opticians really need to know about. The lacrimal apparatus is a group of structures responsible for tear production and tear drainage. Uh, we're also going to talk in the future lecture about the tear layer itself and how important it is to vision. So definitely important stuff. Uh, something I wanted to mention before we moved into the lecture is that if your sound is sounding different, it's not you, it's me. I had a bit of a mishap with the microphone I normally use and it stopped working, so I had to make some changes. Uh, I've tested this. I'm happy with the sound quality. However, it may sound a little bit different from one lecture to another. So before you start trying to figure out why your device sounds different, if it does sound different, we've just changed microphones. Okay. Um, and one more thing I want to mention, I haven't mentioned it in a few lectures. Remember, you have the workbook, fill in the workbook as we go through because these are going to be your notes moving forward and you will be tested at the end of each chapter. Um, and obviously this is a little bit of a different type of learning environment where this is going to be an open book test. I assume people will use their notes. So having good notes helps you do very well on your tests. All right, so I will mention it a few more times about using the workbook because it's very important. All right, let's move into it and take a look at the lacrimal apparatus. So first we have a diagram here of the of an eye uh, and we could see uh, you know around the eyelids and near the nose that we have different structures. Obviously when you're looking at patients you don't see all these structures so we're it's like we can see through the skin and see all these different little structures. This forms the lacrimal apparatus. Let's go through some of the information about it. So the lacrimal system also called the lacrimal apparatus, is the physiological system containing orbital structures responsible for the production and the drainage of tears. Okay, So the lacrimal gland, you'll notice on the diagram, as I start saying these things, uh, the labels will start to pop up. You'll see that bean-shaped gland uh, superior to the eye. It secretes the tears through the lacrimal ducts. Okay, which convey the fluid to the surface of the eye. It bathes the cornea. We talked about how the cornea needs nourishment, how it needs to have that dissolved oxygen from the tears. Well, that's what it's doing. It's secreting it and letting it flow into the eye. Okay, now the tears that accumulate along the bottom of the eyelid uh, in the lacrimal lake at the bottom, okay, uh, where they eventually await drainage through little openings in the nasal corners called the puncta. So there's punctum. Puncta is plural, punctum is one there are they're both for each eye in the nasal corner of the eyelids there's one on the superior eyelid and one on the inferior eyelid okay and that's where the tears drain out of so think of it the lacrimal sorry the lacrimal gland produces the tears flows through the eye obviously with gravity it moves its way down and it accumulates at the bottom we call that the lacrimal lake uh, one important thing about the lacrimal lake is that is one way that we look at a person's eye to determine whether or not there's a sufficient amount of tears in the eye we look to see how many millimeters the lacrimal lake is we're going to go into more detail uh, about that a little later on and then once that fluid is accumulated at the bottom it slowly drips through the punctum uh, out of the eye okay now the tears exit the uh, sorry the tears exit the eye down the lacrimal caniculi okay which is a little tube there that is going from the punctum and into the lacrimal sac where they eventually expel into the nasolacrimal ducts which you see there is the main tube going down and of course they end up in the nasal cavity and in through the nostril. So if you think about it, it's kind of interesting how the tears that are being produced here for maintenance of the eye, they get produced from the lacrimal gland, they work their way down, and they eventually go into your nose. 
Uh, one thing that you can kind of think of that if you've ever cried, of course, everyone's cried at some point, or if you've ever been struck in the nose and your eyes tear up, your nose gets stuffy. And that is because the excess tears are flowing through into the nasal cavity and it's accumulating in your nose and you, you know, end up having to blow your nose. So why is all of this important? Because obviously we've you know, gone this far. Every single time we talk about a different structure, we talk about why it's important to us as opticians. The first reason, and one of the most, probably the most important one, is to remember that tears are critical to vision, okay? We're going to, have to go into more detail about this as, the, as we go through the different parts of optics and things like that, but we talked about how the eye requires a smooth refractive surface of the cornea. Well, the tears keep the cornea healthy, they keep it smooth, keep it transparent. Uh, allow it to refract light. But the tears themselves also have a small refractive component to it as well. So think of it as the tears keep the cornea healthy, which is the main refractive element of the eye, but also refract light in themselves as well. So without tears, you would not have vision. People with dry eyes, with dry eye syndrome, with any kind of conditions uh, that cause their eyes to be very dry, have very poor vision because they no longer have a nice smooth refractive surface. Now, remember the relationship between production and drainage. Uh, it's important to remember that, you know, where the tears come from, where they drain out, because you're going to hear this a lot throughout. Because remember, in eye care, you're getting people who have all sorts of different ailments that have been, that have seen ophthalmologists that might suffer from dry eye syndrome. You're going to hear different procedures they've had done. You're going to hear about block ducts. You're going to hear about having punctum plugs. Uh, punctum plugs are used in order to plug the punctum for people who might have low tier qual uh, quantity and it helps them stay in the eye a little bit longer. And uh, you just can hear a whole bunch of stuff. So understanding, being in the loop is very important in our field. You have, you are a professional and you're going to be a professional. The more you understand about the way the eye works, the more you're in the loop, the more reputable you are. Uh, I want you to think about the difference between maintenance tears and reflex tears. And again, we're gonna talk more about this as time goes on. However, everything we just talked about today I would consider that the maintenance tear cycle, okay? The lacrimal gland producing the tears and flowing, this is happening all the time. Our eyes are always hydrated. They need to be for the reasons we've talked about. Therefore, the eye is always producing tears in a maintenance fashion. Reflex tears, if you think about emotional tears when we're crying or happy, uh, or if it's from pain, if we've been struck in the face or anything like that, or to wind blowing in our face, these are reflex tears. Now, the reason this is important, because you're going to have patients sometimes who complain about teary eyes. Um, one of the number one reasons that you would suspect for teary eyes could be dry eyes. Because if you think about it, if your eyes get dry and it could cause some discomfort, your body will automatically try to compensate, it creates more tears. Sometimes it creates it in excess and that's where people get a weaky eye. So it's very counterintuitive to a lot of patients when they're told that the reason their eyes are always tearing and, and, and weeping is because their eyes are dry. But if you can find a nice, simple way, to, like I just did, to explain to them why this is happening, not only does it help give you credibility, but it helps the patient understand the process. And the reality is, is this is actually a very, very common ailment. So remember, you know, maintenance tears are one thing and reflex tears are another. And sometimes understanding the difference between them help you understand the ailment that your patient is going through. Uh, and, we, you know, I just added this in. Block ducts are a very common issue, especially for women who have worn makeup for years. Sometimes uh, the patient has to have their ducts cleaned out by the ophthalmologist. Uh, they actually stick a small little device through the caniculi to clean it out. Um, I don't know why I added this in. I just, you know, I like to add little tidbits in just so that it doesn't sound new to you if you ever hear these kind of things. And of course, there's a whole bunch of other procedures that can be done re revolving around the tears. Uh, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the tear layer itself and exactly how it works, which is extremely important. And these two lectures will tie in uh, very closely together. So we're not done learning about tears. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about it in a, just a few seconds in the next lecture. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and let's learn a little bit more about tears in the next one. Okay, let's go.